The Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G finally has its global release. And then of course we have the other mid-range phone, the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. This phone here is a little more expensive, but it does have an optical image stabilized main camera, 64 megapixels versus 108 without any optical image stabilization. The Samsung's got a larger 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but just 25 watt charging versus 120 watt charging with the Redmi. So they both have 120 hertz full HD plus Super AMOLED screens, which are great screens. They're flat. They both got plastic build qualities to them, and they both support dual nano SIMs with micro SD card support. But there are other key differences. The chipset, MediaTek's Dimensity 920 versus the in-house Exynos 1280 from Samsung. So in this comparison, I'll compare them in detail, a bit of a camera comparison too, and I'll let you know which one of these I think is the best based on all of those factors and the price. Then what is included with these phones? Well, with Samsung, we get a Type-C to Type-C cable, the paperwork and a SIM tray tool, that's it. We don't get a charger, screen protector or a case included. Now the charge time with the A53 5G is at 25 watts, just over an hour and 30 minutes. Now with the Redmi, you get this, 120 watt charger, we get our Type-C to type a cable there, and they do include a case, TPU case, right there, which is uh, a reasonably good one, clear TPU case, our typical paperwork, and the SIM tray tool, so that is great. Now what about the charge time of this 120 watt charger? Well their claim is 15 minutes, I've never been able to achieve that, it's more like 22 minutes, 21 minutes, and sometimes even about 24, it really depends on the day, but it's still a lot quicker than the Samsung and you get all those included extra things, which I do believe Samsung should be also shipping out with their mid-range phones. Then I'll build and design of these phones. So start out here with the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus. This phone in hand is a bit heavier. So we've got 204 grams versus 189 grams with the A53. And you see the finishes on both of them quite different, the style. So with the Samsung, it's more streamlined, the plastic on the back here around the camera module. And I do actually prefer that. This lighter blue color is quite nice. And this one here, which is actually a dark green color, but it looks more like a gray here. It uh, does feel good. Now, both of them resist fingerprints quite well, but you do sometimes see a few smudges more here with the Xiaomi and the camera module does stick out a little bit. So thickness wise, with this one, you're looking at about 8.5 millimeters versus around about 8.1, 8.2 here with the Samsung. So it is a little thinner and the size of them, so 6.5 inch phone versus a 6.67 inch, that is of course a little bit smaller. And I do prefer the size of the A53, just feels better. So we have a fingerprint reader here on the side, whereas it's in screen, with the Samsung. Now I'll just demonstrate that, how good it is, how quick it is. The Samsung's not that bad at all. Yeah, there we go, hang on. Okay, so that's quick. I think it's actually quicker than the Xiaomi, which is also very quick. It's capacitive always on, you simply touch it, it unlocks, but you can see it's a little slower to respond there with that time when it unlocks. The frame on the phones is plastic and yes, of course, compared to a metal frame, they don't feel as premium when you're handling them. So we have our SIM trays on both down the bottom and they both support two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and a micro SD card. We have our type C ports. Neither of them support video out and they are both sadly USB 2.0 speed. So slow with the transfers. Microphone, one here, one here and the downwards firing speakers. So both of them have dual speakers, but with the Samsung, it's in the earpiece. So when you look at the top here, you won't actually see it. So the Samsung just has a microphone where we've got 3.5 millimeter. Yes, very good to have that. IR transmitter, if you wanted to control air conditioning, TVs and things like that, play jokes on people, you can do it, which is good. And then our loudspeaker here, tuned those loudspeakers by JBL. So let's have a sample of the loudspeakers now, play them side by side and we'll hear and listen to which one is the best out of these two.
Now, where I'm sitting, it was definitely the Note 11 Pro Plus. It's just a little bit louder, and the bass sounded a bit better coming through on the A53, but they're very, very similar there, and we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this model, so that's the reason I would pick for audio the Note 11 Pro Plus. Now, voice calls on both of them are very similar. There's hardly any difference between them. Cameras on these, a very different setup, so we do have optical image stabilization with the Samsung. Now that's a big bonus there. 64 megapixel camera, two 5 megapixels, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and then with the Redmi, this looks like it is the 108 megapixel camera, right? But it's not. That's our 8 megapixel ultra wide. The 108 megapixels, this one right here, so a little bit misleading there where they've labeled that. And then we get a 2 megapixel macro camera ouch and this is nothing right there and that is our led flash front facing cameras we have 16 megapixels versus 32 and they both have a silver ring around that cutout of the camera you'll see here that i don't particularly like this it makes it stand out a lot more but when the screen is on you don't really notice it as much then our screens, they are flat AMOLED screens, full HD plus resolution, 120 hertz, 6.67 versus 6.5. Some people may like the slightly larger screen, but if you're basing a decision on the screen, they are both excellent, and really there is no difference between these AMOLED panels. It's almost like they're the exact same grade of panel, just that one slightly bigger. It's really that. Now brightness on both tops out to be over 700 nits and the whites are uniformed, they look good, there's no color shifting on them, touch response on both is excellent, gestures and everything like that all works well, so they're really, to me, a draw here completely. They are so similar, these screens. You can really not distinguish any difference between them other than the size. Now, both of these phones running at 120 hertz, you get 120 frames per second with the UI, but of course, it does vary. Now, I have noticed that when you swipe down for toggles or notifications, you can get a bit of lag on both of these that will pop through. So they're not flawless, the experience of them, and it's just down to software. They clearly need some optimization from Samsung, from Xiaomi on both of these. So I am on the latest version of the software. So this here is running One UI 4.1 with Android 12. And then we do have with the Redmi, this is running just Android 11 here. So it does need an update and MIUI 12.5, not MIUI 13, which is a little bit odd. So that should be coming soon for this model. But if I have to rate the overall experience of the UIs, I do think that One UI is still superior. It also does have a little bit less bloatware, which I'll get onto now. There are a lot of bloatware applications. There's about 15 of them, over two and a half gigabytes worth of bloat on the Redmi. That's unacceptable, really. That's just way too much. You get about six or seven applications with the A53. Now, internal storage speeds, there is a big difference. Look at this. When you look at the sequential reads and writes, they are much better on the Note 11 Pro Plus. Big difference there. Random reads and writes, not too much of a difference. In real world use of both of these, do you see a difference? Not really. It's only app load times and installation that you notice that it's faster on this model here. Just like the N22 score. So a little bit quicker here, but really there's not much of a difference between them. However, as I pointed out before, the UI and general kind of multitasking things does feel faster on the Redmi. And we do have NFC on both, and you can use your banking applications, and it does pass the safety net, which is good. And here with Widevine, level one cert for DRM, so Netflix is in full HD on both of these models. We have a security level one, good again. And limited support here with the Samsung. Unfortunately, with Camera 2 API, we get level three, the maximum support with the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus. So that is good, but not so great there with the Samsung. Now, GPS on both does work very well, but you get a better accuracy with the MediaTek 920. The Dimensity 920 does not have a limitation on that accuracy. It gets down to one meter. This is three meters here, but both of them get good average strength and both of them, they work just fine. Gaming now, there's a huge difference when it comes to a title, which is very popular, PUBG here. And this is because we are capped with the Samsung. So the A53 
You can only run it at the high frame rate option, which is capped at 30 frames per second. That's just unacceptable. That's not good at all. So you see here, I've managed to get one kill, but when you look around, it feels a little choppy. 30 frames per second, that's not great. I know a lot of console gamers are used to that 30 frames per second, but here with the Note 11 Pro Plus, you go into the graphics option and you get the extreme option. So ultra is, I believe, 45, extreme is 60. That's definitely 60. And in the game, it's just so smooth. Massive difference there day and night. Now with the game space, game turbo, sorry, you can swipe that, bring that up and see that yes, confirm that it's 60 frames per second. And I've noticed that it will run at 60 frames per second most of the time, but a couple of times, I have checked it and seen it dip down to 52, but it's very fluid and just so much better than gaming at a terrible 30 here with the Samsung. What a disappointment. So the developers of PUBG, they do need to add support for the A53 so we can run this game at at least 45 or 60. 60 would of course be ideal. Camera comparison now between the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G and the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus. So with the 16 megapixel camera on the Xiaomi here, you just get 1080p video. 1080p 30 with electronic image stabilization. You get 1080p 30 with the Samsung with electronic image stabilization, but also 4K, but 4K 30, but without any stabilization. So I've set both of them here to 1080p. Now audio bitrate on both is 256 kilobits per second. I'm swapping over the audio sources. So which one here sounds the best to you? The microphones, let me know in the comments and the stabilization, which here looks the best. Just jog along. And we'll take a look at the clouds in the background to see if it's able to actually capture that one. Which one looks the best there when it comes to the clouds that are just up here? Rear main cameras, so both of these, the 64 megapixel, then the 108, don't have any electronic image stabilization, but with the Samsung, at least the A53's main camera does have optical image stabilization. So as you can see, the result is that the footage, while not perfect, is a lot steadier than what I have with the Note 11 Pro Plus shaking around all over the place. Ultra wide video now. So this is 1080p. The Samsung can actually do 4K with the ultra wide but it does not have any electronic image stabilization. It shakes around. So I've set them both here to 1080p. As I move ahead, you can see the electronic image stabilization is working well. And now I'll jog. It looks to me like the Xiaomi here is the steadiest, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus when it comes to the electronic stabilization. However, the image, I think, Looks a, bit, a little bit sharper and more detailed with the A53 5G. Battery life on both of these phones, because they do support 120 hertz and they have very similar screens, very screen, similar screen brightnesses, and the performance of both of them with Antutu is so similar, I found the battery life is about the same. So they're around seven hours of on-screen time. Of course, that's gonna vary on your brightness, your use case. If you're gaming, then it's gonna be, of course, a lot less than that. Now, the charge time, huge difference there. So 120 watts versus just 25. 
The clear winner is the Xiaomi. It only takes about 23 minutes to fully charge that battery, which is 4,500 milliamp hours. The other thing too, with the performance, even though the Antutu scores are so similar, I do see a clear advantage in just general UI performance with the Redmi. It feels a bit better, it has less lags, but it still does sometimes show the occasional animation lags and stutters, especially when you multitask, and you go from a demanding app back into say, Twitter or WhatsApp or something that's not so demanding, it will sometimes show some clear lags on both of them. This one can lag quite a bit too. Now our main cameras, there's a big difference there, 108 megapixels versus having a 64, but with the optical image stabilization, does result in 4K being more stable if you're gonna shoot a lot of 4K video. You also get 4K video with the front camera with the Samsung, and that's good to have, but it doesn't have electronic image stabilization, which is disappointing there. Now, if you use 1080p, you do get it with the front-facing cameras, and with the rear cameras, and with 4K, as I showed you, there's no electronic image stabilization on both, but you have that optical, as I just mentioned. So the build, plastic on both of them. The screens I would rate as a draw, they are so similar. It's just one slightly larger, that's it. So I wouldn't base my decision on that. Voice call quality is good on both of these, no problems, but the audio winner, slightly louder JBL tuned speakers with the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus, and you get, of course, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You also get, in the box, a case, a pre-applied screen protector, the cable, and the charger, where Samsung just gives you a Type-C to Type-C cable. That's it. No case, no pre-applied screen protector, and no FM radio. This, got, this has FM radio too, and that IR transmitter. So you get so much more for less too with the Xiaomi. So the Xiaomi's a little bit cheaper. So it's the one to get, I think. I would get this, but I do prefer the One UI and I think the main camera definitely better and the ultra wide better on this. But overall, I have to pick the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus as the winner here. So do you agree with my findings there? Is that the phone you would choose or are you more loyal to say the Samsung? Let me know in the comments why you would not pick what I picked or if you agreed with what I said, yes, the Note Pro 11 Plus is the model to go for.